Now, students at Long Road Sixth Form College in Cambridge talked politics with the government minister today, Chris Skidmore. The minister for Constitution was speaking to the pupils about young people voting ahead of the local and mayoral elections in May. And our political reporter, Hannah Olson, went along too. I'm Daniel, I'm 18 and I'll be voting in May. Hi, I'm Torin and I'm 17. I'm Saffron, I'm 17. Hello, I'm Princess, I'm 16. Hi, I'm Connie and I'm also 16. 18 to 24 year olds are half as likely to vote as over 65, so why do you think people your age don't vote? Lots of my friends are really interested in politics. They take issue with a lot of things that politicians do. I think the problem comes down to actually voting and getting involved in the, syst like the system of voting. They don't know what they're doing. There's a lack of education there. But what could the political parties do to try and, uh, and government do to try and encourage more young people to vote? Try to speak with less of the political jargon because most young people find it very intimidating when they don't understand it and they find the world of politics to be too confusing for them to follow. Today Cabinet Office Minister Chris Skidmore has come to Long Road Sixth Form College to speak to some of the politics students here about why they think young people don't necessarily want to vote. When it came to the referendum, actually turnout for young people was very high, it was 64 percent. But When it comes to voting for political parties, obviously it seems to be a lot lower. But we have a duty to ensure that when people get the chance to vote that they do exercise that regardless of their age. Is that not an argument to say that political parties aren't offering enough for young people? Regardless of your age, you still use the NHS at any point in your life. You know, key public services that matter to young people, whether it's schools, universities, making sure that we look at what we're doing for investing in the future there, making sure they're sustainable for the future. I think that somehow if we come up with offers that we think, oh, this would be great for the kids, it doesn't help that understanding that actually young people you know, who turn 18 are equally have the ability to make their minds up and you know, ensure that whoever party they vote for, they vote for on the interests that they matter to them for the day. We've got the local elections and as we've already talked about this morning, the, the mayoral elections coming up. How much do you or and your friends sort of know about what's happening in terms of the mayor? Not much at all really. Yeah. No, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> yeah, well, what about you? No, I don't know much either. I think there's a lack of like media involvement with, on a local scale with that. We don't get educated on those small local elections at all. I have heard about this, but I think, um, especially researching for today's presentation, it's really shown how much responsibility the mayor has, and especially then how good it is to vote for that position, because then you actually have a real say. What sort of qualities do you think you would want to see in somebody in that role? Someone who's able to be honest and talk well, communicate with young people and people of minorities. They'd have to be representative of everyone's views and opinions. That would be a massive like, thing I'd be up for. Um, I think I would want them to care about the local community. I think they need to have um, in-depth knowledge of what's going on as well inside the local community. I would find it very hard for you to be a local mayor if you didn't know exactly what was going on within that area. It's, it's the key element to being able to understand exactly what impact you're having over everyone's lives and how that community functions. As students from Long Road Sixth Form College speaking to our own Hannah Olson and the mayoral and local elections are on May the 4th this year. Now in just over three months, voters in Cambridgeshire will go to the polls to choose the county's first ever elected mayor. And one of the first tests for that new role will be how many people turn out to vote for it in May's election. So today, a government minister was in the county hearing ideas from young people about how to get as many of them to the polls as possible. Our political reporter, Tom Barton, has the details. Back to the classroom to hear how sixth formers think young people can be encouraged to register to vote. The Minister for the Constitution was at Long Road College in Cambridge today. At the top of the agenda, the election of a mayor for Cambridgeshire this May. Do you believe that there's a worry um, that turnout will be low, a bit like in the Police and Crime Commissioner's election? When we look at these newly established positions, such as the uh, combined mayoral authority, um, we need to make sure people are aware that this is taking place on the 4th of May this year. So what do these politics students think of this new part of the political system? I do kind of think that you cannot have one person to represent, you know, thousands of people. If the mayor knows both Peterborough and Cambridge and the surrounding areas, then 
is that definitely there's going to certainly going to be some really good points coming out from that. I don't think that you can represent the whole of Cambridgeshire as one. Hopefully the mayor would um, be in touch with his local community and know exactly what it needs. We now know who five of the candidates for the election will be. UKIP have selected Paul Bullen. Rod Cantrill is representing the Liberal Democrats. Peter Dorr is standing as an independent. The Green candidate will be Julie Howell. And last weekend, the Conservatives selected James Palmer. Labour members are currently voting to choose who their candidate will be. Whoever wins May's election here in Cambridgeshire will get a significant range of new powers over training, over where new housing is built and, crucially, over the county's transport network. But while all of that power and significant money is coming here to Cambridgeshire, the same isn't true elsewhere in our region. This isn't, you say, a good thing for Cambridgeshire, but for other parts of our region, Hertfordshire, Bedfordshire, Northamptonshire, there isn't a mayor, there's no new powers, there's no new money. This is an inconsistent policy, isn't it? It's crucial that this is bottom up. So the government, you know, is in listening mode if there are areas that come forward with proposals and workable proposals for devolving, you know, housing budgets, transport budgets, that, you know, we will listen going forward. But it's got to be for those local areas to be able to decide how to do it best. In Cambridgeshire, the countdown has started. And some of these students will be among those choosing the county's first ever elected mayor. Well, Tom is with me now. So, Tom... We know local elections traditionally get slightly lower turnout than general elections. Is there any sense that they're building momentum? This is going to be any different? Well, you heard in my report a student asking the minister about the Police and Crime Commissioner elections. And when those elections were first held back in 2012, you saw the lowest ever turnout, just 12% in some places of people bothering to vote. And even the second time those elections were held back in 2015, uh, only about 30% of people voted, even though those elections were held on the same day as a general election. In councils, turnout is often quite low as well, regularly below 50% for council elections. And so there is a risk here that the new mayoral role could struggle to persuade people to turn out and vote. But this mayor is a big job with a big budget and a lot of responsibility. And I think the minister's visit today shows just how determined the government is that you will have decent turnout at this election. So people in Cambridge are actually getting a vote on it all. What about the rest of the region? I know you asked the Minister about devolution for other parts. Well, elsewhere in the region, uh, at the moment, there aren't any serious discussions going on. There were proposals kicking around for uh, both Bedfordshire and for parts of Northamptonshire. They, though, came to nothing. Meanwhile, a plan for devolution in Norfolk and Suffolk, uh, which was very similar to the Cambridgeshire deal, collapsed last year. But the Minister signalled, as you saw there, that the government is open to suggestions. So it is possible that we could see uh, more mayors elsewhere in our region in the future. We shall wait and see, Tom, for now. Thanks very much.